1 Corinthians 10, verses 12 through 13, the New International Version. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. And from the message, Don't be so naive and self-confident. You are not exempt. You could fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. God bless you on this Wednesday morning as we start another day together. So continuing where we left off yesterday with this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, talking about temptation, and it contains such a profound warning as well as a profound assurance and hope and comfort that as we face temptations, we do not face them alone, and God's actually on our side in the midst of it. Well, today I'd like to focus kind of on the middle part of that passage where it says, No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to all people. And it, I, I love the way um, it's spoken of in the, in the message. You know, no test or temptation comes your way beyond the course of what others have had to face. You know, you ever have that feeling that somehow spiritually you're getting picked on? Or every once in a while I joke that maybe I'm in, in God's spiritual remedial class because I just am a very slow learner. And there are some areas of my life that I really have never had to battle. They simply are things that I haven't been tempted by. And by the grace of God, I have been able to avoid some of the pitfalls and traps that I believe the devil would have put my, in my way. On the other hand, uh, there are other ones where it's like, why? Why am I so vulnerable to these thoughts and these temptations? And not just the temptation, but sometimes acting out of those temptations. You know, the cover when we started this video is a cartoon by Gary Larson uh, uh, from the far side. And it's one of my favorite, oh, these two buck deers are standing there talking to each other. And the one has the big target on its chest. And, uh, and the, the caption simply reads, bummer of a birthmark, Hal. I love that. But do you ever feel like there's a target on you? That there are certain temptations and weaknesses and vulnerabilities that are unique to you? I think it's important to hear what the Apostle Paul is saying, or, or rather what I would say is the Holy Spirit is trying to say through the words of the Apostle Paul. He's warning us that, you know what, when it comes to temptation, we don't need to worry about some birthmark where we are somehow genetically inferior because really everyone is tested. And we've been tested in ways that other people have endured. Some have stumbled and fallen for and others have overcome. It's not like we're getting picked on. But there is that aspect to the story of why am I more vulnerable to some things than other? And I like to look at that question holistically. I think there's a sense in which as a human being, we are uniquely and wonderfully created. We talk about that in scripture, that everyone is created in the image of God. Each one of us is endowed with good and God-given natural gifts and abilities. None of us have a full package of being do, able to do everything all the time well, but all of us can do something well that's part of our gifting. There's a certain sense that the opposite could be said too. We are created in the image of God equally, and we are equally fallen from that image. Our pride, our self-centeredness, 
is part of our, it seems to be kind of hardwired into it. And that may manifest itself in our life in different ways. You know, the programming of our DNA, and it's amazing how science has changed. You know, 30 years ago, the conversation was, oh, we are hardwired for certain instincts and behaviors. And nowadays, the conversations change to neuroplasticity, that our brains actually are very pliable and can learn and adapt and, and create new ways of thinking and learning and responding to situations, much more so than we thought 30 years ago. So it's changing a lot of conversations about why do people do the things that they do? Why is there a target that we seem to be born with for certain temptations and maybe not for others? The question to me, you know, the other thing is, what is our background? What happened to us when we were children? And that happened to us may imply what other people have exposed us to, maybe what other people have done to us. It also implies what did we experiment with? What did we seek out? And what were we curious about when we were younger? The third aspect of, of why we might have a bigger target is what, what is our input? What are we exposing ourselves to in terms of images, in terms of messages? What thoughts do we allow to keep playing and playing through in our minds? What images do we have planted there from the things we've seen in the past that we allow our imagination to run away with. The thing is the battle with temptation, the good news for me in this is that I'm not alone. Everybody has to face these battles and everybody has certain areas of their life that they're vulnerable. And as we talked yesterday, part of the gift of being in the church, part of the gift of being saved by grace is the gift of saying, you know what, I'm, I may not have the same spiritual or moral struggles that other people have, but I have to deal with my own. And there's so many aspects of dealing with my own that are similar to the struggles that other people have to go through as they deal with their own. The biggest challenge is that we don't live our lives in denial. And that we don't throw up our hands and say, you know what, I've stumbled so many times that I'm just gonna give up, I'm not even gonna try anymore. You know, I really believe that's the devil's end game, is not so much that we stumble once in a while, but that we stumble and we get so discouraged that we lose our faith in God's ability to change us and to help us in our struggles. And we begin to think, well, if it all just depends on me, then I'm toast and I might as well just give up and accept that I'm going to live this way and I'm going to do these things, even if deep down in our hearts we know it's wrong and, and we're ashamed and we don't want to do it, we surrender to it. To me, that's the most tragic choice. The reality is why we do what we do, whether it's part of our DNA or whether it's part of um, our environment that we grew up with or part of our current sphere of influence has very little to do with what is right and what is true and what is right and wrong in God's eyes. Just because it comes naturally to us doesn't mean it is necessarily good or God's will. I think of the story from Genesis chapter 4 when Cain and Abel are having their problems and God pleads with Cain Cain, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. That's the warning that we hear in the words of the Apostle to Paul today. There is an enemy within us, our own sin, and it desires to have us, to control us, to enslave us. And by the grace of God, we seek the Lord's help to master it. God bless you, and tomorrow we'll continue with the power that God has to help us overcome. Amen.